What is the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League? It is the first professional baseball league for women. It was active for 12 years from 1943 to 1954. It began out of a concern that World War II would force the cancellation of the 1943 major league season as more and more men were drafted into the war. Philip K. Wrigley, owner of the Chicago Cubs and chewing gum mogul, solved this problem by creating the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Scouts were sent throughout the United States, Canada, and Cuba to find talented players with both athleticism and feminine appeal. The league stressed feminine attire both on and off the field, which was representative in the players' uniforms, which consisted of satin shorts, flared one-piece tunic skirts, knee-high socks, a baseball cap, and lipstick. Baseball players could make as much as $50 to $150 a week depending on their talent and contract negotiations. These teams played full season of baseball with single games scheduled every night of the week and sometimes double headers on Sundays and holidays. These teams were hosted by various Midwestern cities. The inaugural season of the league began with four teams. These teams consisted of the Blue Sox of South Bend, Indiana, the Peaches of Rockford, Illinois, the Bells of Racing, Wisconsin, the Comets of Kenosha, Wisconsin. These cities were enthusiastic to support the league. At the height of the league, which was 1948, it had 10 solid teams and employed over 600 women. The league entertained more than a million spectators in the mid-size mid western cities. All the teams were driving distance from the league headquarters at Wrigley Building in Chicago. So what places did these talented players travel? Well, according to Marge Villa, a player from the Kenosha Comets, she traveled to Havana, Cuba in 1947 for spring training. It was the first time that she and many of her teammates went abroad and got on an airplane. Their two weeks were divided into practice games and exhibit games. After Cuba, Marge Villa was known for her charisma and diplomacy, especially because she was able to communicate with the Cubans in Spanish. In 1948 and 1949, Villa and others were invited to a postseason tour of the Caribbean and South America, meeting local dignitaries and gentry. Such travels gave her team as well as other women a chance to see the world, but most importantly, to gain independence and confidence.